Okay, so we're gonna test out this camera. This is, um, we're in Macau, so walking around uh, Macau right now. We're walking down this little alley right here, so you can see, see from there. And we're just gonna test this out and see. So um, uh, I'm gonna be talking about Macau for the next who knows how much time. Basically, I live here and I'm writing a book about it that's um, gonna be published shortly. Um, maybe from other videos you saw me promoting no couches in Korea. So I'll still be promoting no couches in Korea. But I'm also going to be um, talking about Moon Over Macau in the future as well. So I'm just going to walk around and um, kind of go through some of Macau right now. Okay, so that right there is the perfume uh, bookstore right there. The yellow Okay, so we're going to go take a look here. And actually this one, they carry no couches in Korea, so I've actually have this one in here. Um, and recently they sold a few of them because I did a... Um, we talked to the International Ladies of Macau, so they were really fantastic to talk to. And they, uh, some of them bought their books here, and some of them read it online. This is the, uh, this is where it's at. And it's a Portuguese bookstore. I'm gonna put up on this side too, so those are the locations. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. The guy's famous, I've seen him. Portuguese bookstore. Um, towards Sonata Square. You can see the pavement here. Um, we're just going to keep walking down this way. This is such a beautiful place in Macau, so why not walk it? Just hop over this way. The beautiful thing about Macau is there's so many tourists that you can walk around the camera. Nobody thinks anything of it, so it's perfect. And I'm going to you can look at St. Dominic's Church in a minute, so some of the scenery. A lot of this is kind of upscale shops now that are, that are in here. And there's St. Dominic's right there. Go back a little bit further. Oh, these boxes. some of the scenes of this um, moon over Macau. Probably later I'll go more into detail about it. But this is actually one of the scenes when they walk up and down the street to go up to South Hollow Ruins. So later, if, uh, if you're a person that buys the book later, you, you will kind of know what this looks like now. Yeah, the new book is uh, Moon Over Macau, so it'll be, um, it's going to be available on December 1st. So I'm going to be changing the website as well. Change the name of the website to reflect that. Might give it another name, so um, we'll see what's going to This right here is where we're going to be coming into Sao Paulo Ruins, so 
Let's walk up that way. So right now it still feels like, like you're kind of in somewhere in Europe. And then you get up here and there's a big large cathedral. So this is the uh, Sao Paulo right. ruins. Oh, it's funny, this couple here. I was up here when I was writing this book. I went up to plan this scene. I think that old lady was still there. So she might come up here every night and just sit there. Let's just see. What can I go up into? Okay, so you got one, two, three. Daytime, we can uh, take a look at this more closely. And actually, this is the view, so this is good. Let me stand up here later so people who will read the book will see this in the book, the scene. So I won't tell you what it is, but they'll be able to see all this. So actually I haven't got the response yet from the book because it hasn't been released yet. So I'm not sure the reaction to it yet. There's a scene that happens here and um, I had a good friend read it so he wasn't so sure about the ending. But, um, but we'll see. I kind of um, spent a lot of time rewriting it and kind of changing it quite a bit so we'll see if it's, um, if it's more acceptable to an audience or not. It's beautiful. So, and there's also some, uh, it kind of describes the scene a little bit, all these apartment buildings. Um, what's really attractive to me right here is um, this moon, the moon over Macau. It's a full moon and I'm capturing it right now. This is actually kind of interesting because um, the book kind of talks about an ending scene that's right around this time of year. Uh, about a month back or so. Uh, Hungry Ghost Festival, but it's also the full moon for that time of year as well. Let's see, okay. It's gonna walk across here. There's a statue that's in the book too, so I just want to capture it. It's funny because I also mentioned the Filipino population in there, usually in the park too, so we're gonna keep walking. That way, I'm gonna go up to this statue right there. There's some people around it right now. <laughs> you can barely see it at night time. There he is. Can't really see it. I'll come back here another time. So like the Korean, so speaking in Korean. There's also people over by a park over there. So, okay, we're gonna keep walking down. Yeah, when you come to this area, you'll hear languages from all over. So there's, uh, they're all speaking Korean behind me, a little family. You also hear lots of Filipino, Chinese. So let's just keep walking. Walk all the way over here. So in the scene, I also brought something over to this area. <laughs> Later, you're gonna read about it. Anyways, right there. Um, this spot right there. So, let me go right here. This is the spot right here. So yeah, this spot is at the end of the book. Um, so yeah, it kind of goes down that way. At nighttime, that's actually even now. There's not many people, but you'll see lots of people right over there, right up on top.
But yeah, the ending scene takes place right there. And um, let's just look at this pole. It's, it's a graffiti. Oh. Turn your head and have a view of that. You can see that in the book too. Hua Street. Hua Resurrection. I can't pronounce my Portuguese very well, but Resurrection. So the apartment buildings. Then you have this little area right here. So, um, it's kind of hard to see in the dark. But there's a Chinese temple right here. So to go inside. So let's, let's see. I'll walk around a little bit. So this little temple, this little area has um, temples, but they also have people that live here. Somebody's dog is here. So this is a really pretty area. I'm just gonna walk by here real quick. Hello. So actually, let me see. So I really like the way they, this actually goes to the other side. This is all residential down here. But I like how everything is set up with these little lamps everywhere. Um, this isn't in the book, but I want to show it anyways because there's a lot of little stuff like in the book. We talk about these little things. I'm like, I'm going to definitely do more videos and I'll talk more about that, those little things like that at another time. So actually, I like this is actually people's apartment, so he has his scooter inside. He's the guy just after the dog. But yeah, they also have these little things in front of everybody's houses, almost everybody. It's pretty. So we just keep walking. Let's see. Let's see how that looks. Okay. I actually kind of want to tell a little story. So when I was researching this book, I was um, I saw I was looking around at the statue out there. That statue is um, uh, I'll go and show you in a minute. But that particular statue was um, um, kind of well known for among the Chinese community. So this guy is from the mainland. So he was telling me all about the um, some of the background and history behind it. So um, so when I was talking to him, it was kind of interesting because. We were able to, um, he spent a lot of time just kind of talking to me about him being mainland Chinese and how his, uh, this is really beautiful. He me how he was mainland Chinese and how the reaction to people from Macau and Hong Kong. And I didn't really want to say too much to him about mainland behavior um, because he's from the mainland. And he's probably aware of it already about the perception that's not always so good. Oh, here we go. I was sitting here just reading this. So I was reading it about him anyways on the book. And um, I just kind of go through this, go through this. So if you wanted to read it, you can. You can just kind of stop and play the video. Sorry. But yeah, him and I were sitting right here. So I was just sitting here and um, just tell me all about like perceptions saying like how excited he was to be in somewhere so different. So even though it's China, it's really not. So for him, it was just so exciting and so different. So he was saying like, you know, he, he was um, kind of yelling and shouting and screaming, you know, which is a stereotype of mainland Chinese anyways. And, um, and then, you know, locals would be like, hey, you know, like, you know, settle down, you know, don't yell like that. That's not appropriate. So um, anyways, he was kind of telling me all that stuff and we we're sitting here and he's also telling me about the police system, you know, and how it's different in Macau versus um, mainland China. So it was pretty interesting just listening to him. And then as we were sitting here, it was kind of funny because he was actually a pretty good guy, uh, as most human beings are, him included. And while he was here, there was a guy that was like from the mainland. He had a beer, I think, and a lot of the mainlanders don't always, um, they don't really do things. They're kind of questionable behavior sometimes. Um, some of them, not all of them, a lot of them are great people, of course, but this particular one, he had a beer in his hand and he was like staring at us, so, you know, we're just sitting here talking and the guy kind of got in my face, like, you know, just, like, uh, but not as much, he was looking at me, but he was looking even more at the Chinese guy, like, you know, like, how, how can you be speaking English, you're Chinese, 
which is a perception that's um, more very, very much mainland. You don't get that here. The locals here, the Macanese, the Chinese from Macau, the Chinese from Hong Kong are very, very international. So I never ever have those issues. You know, they speak to me in English all the time. Um, I can barely practice Chinese because they will usually speak English to me no matter what. But anyways, that guy was like kind of staring at him, staring at me. And I guess that's why him and I, he was teaching me about this kind of stuff and his belief system where he was from. And then um, that was happening, so he was, uh, he felt pretty embarrassed by it and he was kind of telling me about, you know, I think I was just kind of com commenting like, oh man, that's really rude, right? And then that's when we started talking about his embarrassment of being a mainlander and his mistakes that he made because he really loves visiting here and he loves all the culture. So, you know, he was saying in the mainland China with the Cultural Revolution, things have changed where things are still the same here. So I don't want to get into detail about that, but, but basically here there's a lot of um, like old traditional Chinese characters. You know, when they see these temples, you know, there's, um, they've been here for quite a long time. There's a lot of history here. So it's, you know, it's China, but it's also um, like a different kind of China than the mainland Chinese. Anyways, him and I sat here for quite a while. I was talking and um, kind of really enjoyed that. So you saw me writing. So I was writing with the, um, I was writing down a bunch of ideas for the book and the stuff I wanted to include and share in uh, Moon Over Macau, so that's why, um, that's kind of why he, uh, anyways, that was all right here. I was talking to him like that for, actually I spent one whole night just sitting here. I think um, I was going to walk down here, but I think we're going to go back up to the top. Look at that moon, it's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. Flip it around. So the floodlights, so there's these strong floodlights, that's in the book too. And they all shine up to the ruins. There's the moon right there. Kids are always playing in this area. Tourists are kind of everywhere, it's more Korean. That's sick. So you can view all these casinos. Yeah, they're all Chinese, uh, Korean tour group. So they're all speaking in Korean. It's probably the moon is really beautiful. Okay, let's see. Okay, a lot of people will hang out on the side and you can kind of see actually that's uh, Filipino language. So, just, so you see a lot of Filipinos and Indonesian too sometimes. And uh, they'll just hang out in the evening and eat or drink, socialize, interact with each other. So there's not a lot of bars in Macau. There's some, of course, but not a ton. But, um, but it doesn't really matter because it's legalized to drink outside. I think it's legalized. It's so common, anyways. So we're just going to keep walking down here. Might even just walk into the battery. It goes out. Coco's legend bird's nest. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah. I want that ice cream. No, that's okay. Thank you though. Is that your ice cream shop, the Coco? Yeah. 
Oh, this is right here. Coca Legend? Oh, this is together. I'm just gonna take a picture of Can I film you guys? Brother. So you guys are the owners? I'll just take it. Oh, this guy's out. Peace go! The other guy's just kind of helping out. So. Hello, how you doing? Take some, taking some videos. Peace go! Peace go! Alright guys, have a good business. Good luck. Peace go! down there you can see a super box sign so that's his place great place great people so you can see this is um this is also part of the street too so we're gonna go down so that's where the street of herbalist is it keeps going all the way down and hello so we're gonna keep walking this way so they got lots of food here they're making some um let's see what I just said okay The festival's at, so this is says, um, let me zoom in on that. So, okay, so there's a kind of a food area right here, people are eat outside, but I don't want to be rude, so we'll just keep walking. Okay. These great alleys, you can see cow. So, I guess this is all Portuguese food right here, possibly some Macanese food too. Going here, fruit fruit area. This is right up by the main square here. So selling fruit, and then there's the main. So okay, okay. So I got the GoPro. And this is um, this is a come out of the store. It's beautiful right here. The moon over there, so it's beautiful. Lighthouse. So some other time I'll go up on the lighthouse and go up to the full moon. So okay. Oops. So we're just gonna walk down this way. Uh, let's see. We're basically going to walk all the way to the bus stop next. So all this cardboard here, this is um, usually every evening they have to take out all the cardboard from reshocking all the shelves and then they somebody comes later and throws it all away. So there's a homeless lady. You don't see many homeless ladies. Beautiful trash can. Hello. So yeah, she's actually maybe I might um, see if I 
if I can give her some money. Give her some money here. You got some money? Okay, let's do this. So, okay, I thought I'd give her some money, so um, I don't want to put her on film directly, but that was, uh, actually I kind of like that scene because, um, actually in No Couches, uh, sorry, Moon Over Macau, there's a scene where um, the main character actually helps out people like that, so um, if, once you... But yeah, the main character, he's kind of looking for people like that. And so that's kind of where he causes, he has some of his problems. So um, he finds, uh, tries to help out people. And uh, you'll see, once you read the book, I'm kind of telling a lot of little hints about it anyways. But uh, actually it's kind of funny because you don't really see many homeless people. There's, they're around, but not many. So she was actually quite nice and she also spoke good English too. Actually, I might just see, I might just flip this around and see if I can see her from a distance. So let's see. I don't know if I can or not. Looks like she's gone. But anyways, she maybe might be way down there. Those cardboard boxes probably cleaning. But at nighttime you'll see all, people kind of go through all the garbage and the um, cardboard boxes usually. So I think they get money out of the cardboard boxes. If, I'm, if there's anything like Korea, all the um, older ladies they go through and pick up the cardboard boxes and bring it in for money. But here, I don't know, maybe they're employed by the city or they have a different system. But I definitely see, you know, people who look like they should be retired, like older ladies or men that are going around and... Um... Yeah, if you're curious, when I saw that uh, homeless lady, I gave her 20 mop. So 20 mop is like about $3 which would be enough for her to get um, probably a Chinese dinner, actually. I mean, usually the foreign food is more expensive, but the Chinese food is not, not too bad, so. This is called Sonata Square. So I think we're just gonna go around it real quick. There's a scene with a little boy, too, so. Um, uh, it's a little bit of a hint, but he likes trains a lot, so he throws a train in there. Somebody has to go get it. And he gets all wet in the process. So, okay. Let's just see here. So yeah, they're posing for a picture right there. But actually this is a really cool picture. Actually this is really good with the moon right there. So we have the moon. Step back. There's another area that's really pretty too. So yeah, there's the moon right there. Grandis bow in the background. And um Beautiful. So this is called Sonata Square. And in the daytime you can see this is a, actually that building I like to be actually pretty in the daytime so you kind of have these different colors. So kind of a light blue in the background. That one way up there. It's a light blue one. That one. And then it kind of blends with this yellow one, that yellow one. And then this one I think is um, green so it's kind of a pretty color in the daytime. Let's see. Let's walk down a little bit this way. Oh uh, yeah, that's pretty. But later. Let's go down. So here's all Filipinos and people hanging out here. So we're just gonna keep going. So yeah, we go right there. Keep 
button. Yeah, Macau is a uh, re really love living in Macau actually. It's one of them. Um, Recycling, plastic, metal, paper. Plus has Wi-Fi, you know it's out of the Northwest. Post office. I'm gonna walk down this main street right here. So um, sometimes this can be really, really crazy crowded in the daytime, but right now it's actually not bad at all. We're gonna walk all the way down it. But yeah, sometimes I'll see, you know, like just people with luggage and everybody trying to get to a bus. Beautiful designs. So we'll try to capture that a little bit in the book. It's actually even more beautiful. And the medium of visual is. Um... Actually, this one I might just walk up there real quick. This is Cathedral Bar. Let's just see. Just walk up these steps here. Just gonna walk up. Okay, it's gonna go walk up here. There's also a scene at Cathedral Bar here too, so this one overlooks the cathedral area. And it looks like it's, uh, there's people hanging out here. Looks like there's people here today. Some people. It's, uh, let's say Cathedral. It goes back down to Snap Square. Let's say Cathedral. And this one is, uh, Cathedral bar, so it's a nice it's a Portuguese in the background. Sit out on the benches. So a lot of times people will sit out here, and you can um, you know bring your beer outside and sit right in this area. So hello, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> it's beautiful tonight. Nice night, right? Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, very friendly. Oh, I really like this a lot. This is uh, you can sit right out there over in that balcony. It's beautiful, beautiful spot. See, I think those those are uh, Filipinos sitting there, most likely. Um, usually, Filipinos are really friendly, so. This is Jollibee's, this is where a lot of Filipinos like to eat, it's a chain, and it just came to Macau maybe, maybe three, four months ago maybe, so it's almost brand new, but if you go up there you'll see almost all Filipinos, um, if I can get across, maybe I would, let's see if we can just kind of zoom in there, Okay. So, uh, here we go. Bruce Lee, that's kind of funny because um, it's a reference to Bruce Lee in the book too. There he is. It's the first time I've seen him in this thing right here. The Bruce Lee and Actually, the Bruce Lee is in the book because it makes kind of making a reference to it. So um, later, if I talk more about the book, it's um. So I'm just gonna zoom in. It's kind of a cool shot. Looks like they're taking pictures there. So there's a jewelry shop. Look, look, Fook. look, Fook. Anyways, let's keep going. So 6A bus. Uh, but yeah, the Bruce Lee, he's actually in the book, and I uh, reference him. Um, you see earlier, but like later, earlier I was talking about the lady with the, um, the lady with the, uh, uh, picking up garbage, looking for somebody, looking for trash, looking, going through the trash. And I gave her 20 mop, right? So in the book, there's a few instances where the, one of the main characters, he gives money to people. He's looking to do that. 
so it's kind of funny that I saw that. And then Bruce Lee, um, there's this kind of a passing reference to him with um, with uh, the kind of the Chinese belief system with uh, Feng Shui and such like that. book is called Moon Over Macau, so we're getting all these references tonight, kind of um, having a pretty amazing little preview that I didn't expect to be doing tonight. And actually right now we're walking back to the bus stop, so um, yeah, Macau is just beautiful. I um, love, love living in the city, it's so small, easy to Let's see, I think we can go. Let's see, waiting for that light. There we go. So now we got the light and we got both lights, so I'm gonna just keep going through here. I'm gonna keep going. There we go. We got both lights, all three lights. That's amazing. Huge it's time to where we can't get across. That's beautiful right there. Okay, so we're gonna keep walking. Yeah, I love this. Um, I love the tile and the floor. This is all from uh, Portugal. Uh, a lot of Portuguese cities have this kind of stuff, you know, Lisbon, Rio de Janeiro, um, definitely Macau. I visited Portugal a few years ago, and um, you can definitely see the strong connection. It's beautiful, love it. Okay, so we're going to keep going. Actually, um, there's a store right here, it's Macau Square. There's one store right here, can't remember the, the location, but there's one that all the expats will talk about, like, you know, 50, oh, there it is, New Johan, way down there. So I never go in there. Um, I don't go in there because there's no reason to go in there, but a long time ago that was where people would find all their foreign stuff. It's in uh, New Yehon. They don't really need to anymore because everything is so international. So. The food area, donuts. Okay. So we're gonna keep going. Gold. I'm gonna talk more about gold some other time. But there's a lot of gold shops everywhere in Macau. Usually around gold, around. Um, I think it's kind of associated with money laundering, but it's hard to really say. I mean, I don't, I don't fully, fully involve myself, so I have no idea. This little street is really quiet right now, quiet all the time, but it's like so, so underutilized. There's all these residential stuff, there's um, businesses here. I always feel like this could be, you know, like a little um, hawker square. Like in Singapore, you have all these little hawker squares everywhere. But you don't really have them so much in Macau, but you could. Actually, what I'm thinking about doing is um, I'm going to revive the, the YouTube channel with um, footage of Macau and kind of you know talk about Moon over Macau. And I live here where no couches in Korea. I left. I was there in '96 to 2008, off and on, but I don't live there anymore. So, um, but I do live here, so I can I can get to sh I get to share the city with people. Let's go zoom in down there. That's beautiful too. So there's this Portuguese tile right there, there's um, some of the casinos. So a lot of, in Portugal there's a lot of tile like that, so I'm just going to zoom in on that a little bit. So the red light, so that tile right there. Wait for the green light. There we go. So, kind of, so here, real quick, one of the beautiful things about Macau is everybody has cameras, anyways, because it's a, such a tourist city. The building is really beautiful. It's going to film that a little bit. It's really beautiful. Gonna let this crowd go a little bit. Let's film right here for a minute.
But yeah, so actually, this is um, all kind of Portugal influenced, as is the tile here. It's beautiful designs. This is a freshman school. So actually, I wrote, I had kind of referenced this a little bit in the book. This actually, this school, but um, but I kind of rewrote some stuff. So I think I actually um, deleted that part. It wasn't much more than a paragraph, anyways. But actually, and I'm just going to stand up here. But yeah, this one was kind of a reference to how much it changes. So down there it goes to Senado Square. And then right here, it's um, right down there, there's all this uh, casinos and the bus I'm going to take to go home. This is something I was really impressed by when I first got here with these apartment buildings. These little circular, you know, like, um, just kind of like the way that you could live in one of those and have that kind of view like that. Exposure to the sunshine in the winter. We've got pretty mild winters though, but, but nonetheless. So anyways, we're gonna keep walking, so. Hey, yeah, uh, I'm just gonna share it real quick, but like years ago, I used to have a blog in Korea called um, Soul Journals. And you can actually find it, you can archive it. In the, um, there's a website, you can look for how websites used to look like a long time ago. So you, you can look under mine, kevinmaher.com. Um, and you can find it. Um, the way it was a long time ago, but now it's different, of course, because times have changed. I'm going to go over here. So there's some casinos right there. I just want to take a picture of this. These are almost non-existent, but some tourists take them sometimes. But this is kind of like an old-style Macau that's really only here for touristic value now. They hang out right in front of the casino, because people still might use it in this area. Okay, so we're going to keep walking, we're going to cross this street. Okay, and actually the book, this is kind of a popular tourist area, almost almost all mainland Chinese usually stay here. I think most of the... Uh, some, sometimes I see foreigners, of course, see them everywhere. But I think um, the bigger casinos are more popular. You know, the ones that, um, like, Phoenician and Parisian. Actually, lots of mainland tourists are there too, but, but here I always see them, and they're usually hanging out right here. And there's this kind of funky building, so it's actually feel that. To me, I see it every day, so it's not so interesting, but probably on the camera, it might be really interesting. So um, later I'll get a better view of it, but people usually hang out here. The moon is so beautiful. Uh, ironic, you know. We're talking about moon over Macau, this is the project. Yeah, I'm going to be changing the website and um, promoting moon over Macau. And I'm getting all these um, kind of symbolic things here. So later I'm going to try to um, capture more of Macau. And um, you're going to see a lot more of the city. So yeah, this light has a really long one. 37 seconds still. It's okay, if we can film it. So this one has um, all this kind of colorful stuff. Then we're going to go take a look at this building. Oh, it's kind of a lotus leaf shape up there, so you can see it from quite a ways back. Tourist. Oh, that's a foreign tourist. Okay. That's so interesting here, right? So in the book, I kind of talk about, you know, just kind of a highs and lows. You can feel sometimes. I used to walk through it quite a bit. Study Portuguese. Uh, way down that way. and. Um, the Portuguese Embassy, so I used to always walk through there all the time. All right. So Grand Lisboa right there. This is always in lots of people's photos. I think it was definitely in mine. I took lots of photos of it when I first got here. Oops, let's see. 
gonna keep walking. So these are all the relics of another era. They will take people around. I almost never see them in, in use, but they're still of their touristic value. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna. I'm definitely going to show lots more of Macau in the future, so today is actually the first video. But yeah, Lisboa. There it is. This is also where the New Year's Eve stuff is at, right here, too. And many years ago, this used to be a this area used to have some giant statue, so this was um to some to a Portuguese guy. I have to look it up who it was again, but um but I guess it was like pretty big symbolism. So when they um turned it over to China, they uh, tore it down, I guess. And now it's um big bus station. So we're just gonna take a look here. Uh, let's see. Anyways, basically that's about it. I'm just gonna wait for the bus moon again. And there's the casino, Miss Boa. It's gonna wait for the bus and um, go a little bit closer and talk. But yeah, so basically I'm gonna be showing Mikau and um, letting people see what it looks like. I'll try to record some different stuff as I walk around, so um, we'll see how it goes. And I'll definitely, um, you know, if you write some comments, I'll definitely respond to those, um, or I might turn them off, depending. It's hard to say, I'm not really sure. I don't really like to go back and look at all the comments, actually, but, um, but I'll probably look at some of them once in a while. There's my bus, okay.